Girl. Hello friends. Welcome back. My name is Ramon. How are you today? In today's video, as you can see in the title, we're we're talking. We're talking about the new Biosan sunscreen. That is the Biosan Squalene Plus Zinc Sheer Mineral Sunscreen. SPF 30, PA plus plus plus, uh, body spectrum, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people have talked about this. I've seen it hyped up on a lot of people's channels. The first person I saw talk about this was Hiram, but in more recent weeks, I've seen a lot of ads and commercials for this. Commercials like Instagram ads where people are talking about it, applying it and whatnot. I also saw a series of sponsored content featuring people like Ivan Lamb and Jackie Aina talking about the sunscreen. There's a lot of hype around it. There's a lot of things people are saying and I'm putting those things to the test. Before we get into this video, I'm gonna ask that you subscribe, ring that bell notification so that you know when I post more sunscreen related content, which is pretty much all my channels about right now. And also in the comments below, tell me what you thought about the sunscreen if you've tried it or other sunscreens that you are really digging right now or that you want me to try. I was talking to a couple subscribers about this and thought I needed to test it. I'm also gonna ask, as you saw in the beginning of the video, to check in the description box down below. I have links, master threads, as well as other resources for mental health and otherwise available in relations to all of the Black Lives Matter related things that are going on right now. This channel is pro-black, pro-black lives, pro-black women, pro-black trans and queer folk. If that's not your tea, sorry, please unsubscribe. Don't watch my content. That's what this platform is all about. So if you're able to donate, I really strongly recommend check the links down below for organizations that you can and donate to in relation to Black Lives Matter. I only have like 200 something subs. I can't be monetized, so I can't really give money from this channel, but these are organizations that I've donated to personally, therefore strongly urge you to do so as well. So, Biosans. A lot of hype around this one. Getting into the deets about it real quick, as I mentioned, squalene, which is Biosans' is like staple hero ingredient in pretty much the entire line. Broad spectrum, really great. SPF 30, this has 14% zinc oxide. For mineral only sunscreens, zinc oxide's a really decent filter for covering a majority of the UV spectrum. In order to have a really good sufficient protection though with zinc, you need to have a high percentage of it. So 14% in this, that's not horrible. The issue with that though is with high percentages of zinc oxide, you tend to get into the really an elegant texture formulation territory. But broad spectrum, things to look for in your sunscreen. This also has a PA rating of it, of three pluses. PA ratings kind of denote a sense of what UVA protection is. You see it a lot in Asian sunscreens. It's not the most regulated rating system, PPD is a much better one that's a lot more thorough and has a much higher level of like protection rating, if that makes any sense. But PA rating, that's pretty interesting on there, but it tells you three pluses, which is a testament to zinc's inability to really cover the majority of the UVA spectrum. So concerning. Things are gonna be testing, and these are like the online claims. Powerfully invisible, broad spectrum, mineral SPF 30 protects even the most sensitive skin like you've never seen. It's a physical sunscreen, great for sensitive skin. This lightweight, deeply hydrating lotion blends in for all skin tones fast without leaving a trace. We gonna be testing that. It calms and cools sun-stressed skin and leaves absolutely everyone with a soft, dewy finish. The hero ingredients besides the zinc oxide are squalane, which squalane, hero ingredient in all Biosense products that they base their entire line around. It's a naturally derived vegan squalane that comes from uh, sugarcane. It's actually a really great oil to use in skincare for pretty much all skin types. It's really, really hydrating and moisturizing. It also has water lily, and water lily is kind of like, I guess, the antioxidant they're using in this, which they're touting as being that like element that kind of helps to soothe and protect sun-stressed skin. What's cool about the Biosense website is they also have a little cool feature that if you're using exclusively all Biosense products, it tells you kind of like what order to put things in in order to best suit your routine. That being said, you don't need all of those things. Minimal is better. Something they're really also touting is that this, because of its texture and its really moisturizing benefits to it, you don't need a moisturizer. That's something I always talk about on this channel. Sunscreens in general oftentimes have really great moisturizing factors to them. So just cut out moisturizer, two in one product, one and done, you're good. Something that you might notice that they're saying on screen is that I'm actually in day four of the swear test. I had to re-record my intro for this just because um, you can't see it right now, but you'll see it in some of the application footage. I was still undergoing a really bad uh, allergic contact dermatitis reaction. So my eyes are really puffy and red and whatnot. So I didn't want that to be the kind of visual that you were basing the sunscreen off of. So this is day four that I'm currently in. You'll see my application footage though as I go on. So yeah, let's get into what my final thoughts are and how I felt about the sunscreen. As with all the sunscreens that I test on this channel in this manner, what I'm really testing is the four Bs. Beard, beading, beet, and brown skin friendly. So with each day's wear test, I'm basically adjusting the skincare underneath and the makeup on top of it to see how well it pairs with those different variables. And then we're testing the overall factors about how I feel about it in terms of being a person of color, the texture, the formulation, all that kind of stuff. So. Day one was my simple skincare, simple makeup. I was still in the deeps of my really bad allergic reaction, as you can see. So um, in the middle of this, my skin was really dry, really parched. And so that being said though, I was having an allergic reaction. So I'd really pare back my skincare. 
So for that day, it was just simple hydrators, sunscreen on top, and then I went in with a little bit of concealer to buff around to just have that sit and set. Oh, and that was my first kind of feel for the texture and everything on the sunscreen. What I will say about it is that it went on, it felt heavy, I could feel that, but because my skin was so dry, it just sucked it all in. But makeup went on perfectly over it. I had no irritation considering my skin is really, really hypersensitive during this time. So that was good. Day two, I amped up the skincare. I did a really, really full routine. Again, my skin was really, really dry. So I really leveled up and layered on those hydrators. I did three different hydrators, in essence, and two different toners couple different layers of moisturizers and occlusive factors to lock all that moisture and hydration in and the sunscreen on top of that it didn't peel or affect any texture of the sunscreen makeup applied beautifully on top of it it wore really well throughout the day day three very simple skincare again just some hydrators the sunscreen on top of it and i did my full full coverage matte long wear beat again no issues in terms of like how it played with both factors and then today for day four we're doing just sunscreen nothing else um i had a subscriber be like hey I don't wear makeup, but I really want to know how these sunscreens wear just on skin by themselves. So I'd like to see that. So that's what today is. Since I was just doing sunscreen and today was going to be only sunscreen day, I decided to pair it up with two Biosans products that I have in my collection. I just rinse my face, apply these on top. This is the Biosans Squalane Plus Omega Repair Cream, as well as the Biosans 100% Squalane Oil. So really, really rich moisturizing factors underneath the sunscreen, considering my skin situation right now being super, super dry. I've used these products on their own without the sunscreen, and they've been fine with the sunscreen today. It feels really heavy and really greasy, so. I'm currently in hour, I think three or four of that wear test. And on top of that, I decided to go in and reapply today after two to three hours to kind of see how things would look and Girl, this is not it. No, oh, ma'am. Final thoughts on the sunscreen. For the four Bs, beard. If you can see right now, you can see it in my hairline, you can see it in my beard. Day one, it wasn't as severe, I felt, so in the studio light, but the minute we went outside to the store, my boyfriend was like, I, I can see it in your beard, it's collecting. And then in my hairline, you can see a very abrupt line of that. Beading. This plays really well with everything I put underneath it. The days when I did my standard hydrators, I just did my standard Secret Key Essence, Hot Labo Toner. I needed hydration because my skin was super dry, but I couldn't do a lot of actives just because my skin was really compromised. But this wore beautifully on top of that, and it's no texture issues. This texture is very different from a lot of the other physical sunscreens I've been playing with. We'll get to that in a second. Beats. Makeup went beautifully over this. The texture of this, I kind of reminds me of like a really rich cream moisturizer. Think of like the Embryolese moisturizer that a lot of people talk about on this channel, or like just a really rich cream texture. It lays really well underneath makeup, therefore you have a really good base to work with. And then brown skin friendly. You be the judge of that. The formula here is going to blend into all skin tones because the active ingredient for sunscreen is a mineral non-nano zinc oxide. This is great because it blends perfectly into all skin tones. You're not gonna look washed out, you're not gonna look ashy. <laughs> to me, this doesn't hit the mark. And that's where we're gonna get into this next part. So I came into this wear test because, I mean, I'd seen some hype around this. Hiram really talked about how this was the first sunscreen he'd seen that was a physical only sunscreen that had no white cast on dark skin. He's like, this will leave no trace of sunscreen. And then even the website itself, verbatim, just blending in without leaving a trace, blends in for all skin tones. Here's the tea though. And then they would also show people applying it like, one of the specific commercials was one person applying uh, just a regular physical SPF and you could see like, oh, like it's thick. She's like kind of really rubbing it in. And then she goes in with this and it like blends in seamlessly. And I saw another Sephora related YouTube video where the model had a super rich skin and she like, it's my favorite everyday SPF, but she's literally applying this much. This is a great daily sunscreen. I love applying it every morning and it leaves a gorgeous dewy finish. Most sunscreens leave a white cast on the skin. This one does not. It rubs completely in and absorbs all the way. Of course it's gonna blend in with nothing. Look at that. Rub it in, it's gone. Not even actually. You know, you see people speak about the sunscreen in different ads and Jackie Aina was one of the big ones. And Jackie Aina is a big proponent of sunscreen. That's something I celebrate about her is that she really stresses for everyone that sunscreen is important no matter who you are, what color you are, where you live, everything. But these people don't put enough on. And like, I see all these ads and the sponsored content and what Biosans is like having people say. And there's a lot of misinformation with this is what it's gonna basically boil down to. In terms of like what I thought about the sunscreen itself, mind you, I have super severely dry skin right now just because of my irritation, but I normally have a really oily acne prone skin type. There was really weird 
contradicting feelings about this. First and foremost, this is heavy. This is a very heavy, greasy texture sunscreen. And I know that because on my hands, I still feel it. On my ears throughout the day, I would just feel the greasiness of it. I would apply this and like go to like handle my phone and I would see like the bluish fingerprints that would left from the sunscreen. But that being said, it doesn't feel moisturizing. Like mind you, I told you my skin's super compromised. Very my skincare, whether it's just a couple layers of hydrators or like a full routine underneath it. Within a couple hours of applying this, my skin was just like dry, arid. Like the day I did the full beat, when I went to wash my face that night, it just looked like sandpaper. And so it's like, it's a really heavy, greasy texture, but it doesn't leave my skin moisturized, all things considered. And I apply ample amounts. Second thing is, this smells like a sunscreen. My boyfriend kisses me, he's like, you smell like sunscreen. But that being said, like it doesn't burn your eyes and it doesn't sit on top of your skin in like a really weird layer that would cause makeup to peel or that it feels like sunscreen. But that being said, it's it's rich and it's heavy. So it feels like just a really heavy moisturizer on your skin. So do with that what you will. Mind you, this is also after a reapplication. Something else I'm gonna test now in sunscreen uh, videos is reapplying the sunscreen on top of it. And like, I look greasy, I feel greasy. And this is me still with having drier skin. My oiliness hasn't come back yet as I'm still kind of getting over that reaction, but like, I look radiant. Also look, I'm just creasing in my eyelids. Like, look at that. Basically, this would be a sunscreen for someone who has really dry skin. I was reading reviews online just to kind of gauge people who have a similar skin type to my normal skin type, oily, acne prone. And they're like, this is heavy, this is greasy. It caused me to break out, it's occlusive. And that's the thing that a lot of physical sunscreens have here in the US is that they're generally very greasy, very occlusive, and they're not like oily skin friendly. So now my other beef with this is in terms of like claims for like all skin tones. I consider myself mid-range. I'm Fenty 290. I don't have very tan, dark, deep skin. If you want to see someone applying that with a, dip a deeper skin tone, I recommend Simply EJ. I'll link her video down below. As well as the Style and Beauty Doctor. The two girls are really deep skin tones who apply these sunscreens and you can see how it looks like on their skin. And even watching them apply it, I'm like, oh, like it has a bit of ashiness to it. And I wouldn't say ashiness. This is very much what I would consider a tone up where it doesn't leave that blue lavender film, but it definitely like brightens up the complexion that can kind of be a little bit sus in like natural lighting. And I get that on me. I see a lot more on them. Therefore, I'm going to say it's not necessarily the most brown skin friendly. Is it good for physical sunscreen? I'm going to say yes. But in reality, I'm going to give this like a 50% in that regard. So my beef with this and the reason why the video is titled what it's titled. Out of all the sunscreens I've tested in this way, this is the one that I feel like the most heated about in regards to what the claims were, what I expected, and what came of it. And that just goes behind Biosance's advertising versus the miseducation behind this. I went into this hearing a lot of stuff about, oh, super sheer factor, it's in the name. There's no white cast, blends into all these skin types. And you have sponsored content. These are beauty influencers who have a big say who are getting paid to make specific claims about the sunscreen, right? And I think what makes it worse to me is that you had specific influencers kind of praising this, being it's a physical sunscreen so much better than chemical sunscreens, blah, blah, blah. Which first of all, that's something I always hate, the demonization of, of chemical sunscreens sunscreen filters. But the thing with this is that I already had expectations about the sunscreen just based off the ingredients list and kind of textures of physical sunscreens and those expectations were met. Ideally you want those things exceeded. And the reason why is I always profess to apply a specific amount of sunscreen. Quarter to half teaspoon on your face, your neck, and your ears. And that's the amount recommended that's tested by the people who are formulating these to give you that SPF and UVA protection, right? But then you look at the ads and people aren't applying enough sunscreen. If I can, I'm gonna include a clip here to show you like what people are doing in terms of like applying, but like they're applying like little pea sizes amount, like you would like a primer or a moisturizer or something, and that's not giving you adequate protection. So you can't do that and then say it's super sheer blends and all skill skin tones. And that comes in with the education factor. I mean, I'm gonna say, if they're recommending wearing sunscreen, that's already a great thing, but you need to be teaching people to wear the proper amount to get the proper protection they need. If you're not doing that, they're not getting the SPF 30, which is also mm, that this product claims, and essentially you're wasting your money. And this is a $30 sunscreen for 50 mil or 1.7 fluid ounces, which that's nothing. Considering how much you go through applying a generous layer in the first place, plus a necessary reapplication throughout the day, you're gonna go through this in no time. And that's just, it's unnecessary. And also the non-greasy claims of this, like completely disagree. Again, I mentioned I used the BioSon skincare and the Biosan Squalene Oil, I use this on a regular basis throughout the week. Like, I like this oil. And in itself, granted it is an oil, it doesn't feel heavy. This feels heavy. This feels greasy and it lingers on my hands and my skin. 
Like if I feel this that's greasy and it feels nasty, like that's not an enjoyable texture. So another thing that kind of kills me with this back in the advertising thing is if I'm gonna put it on screen too, it's from their website and it's a clinical report, which I don't know the legitimacy of that. But the last part says 94% said product was non-greasy with little asterisks as like notes. So then you go down to the thing and that note says, based on a 28 day consumer study of 35 women ages 25 to 60 once daily use. A, this is greasy. This is a greasy ass sunscreen, but B, daily once daily use like you're supposed to reapply sunscreen throughout the day and so it's like that miseducation plus the unreality of situation which i mean technically is reality because people don't reapply sunscreen but like i feel like as a skincare brand overall you should really recommend using products properly biosense as a brand overall i don't got beef with they got great products they have really great ingredients great ethics decent formulations across the board this just missed a lot of marks to me and a lot of the factors behind this from what I was expecting and anticipating versus the reality of the situation and then going back and looking at certain things. I'm like, oh. my feelings about this are just really negative overall just due to the experience. Is it worth it? No, it's expensive. First and foremost, you know, I never recommend sunscreens over $20. This is 30 for not a lot of products. I'm not gonna recommend it just on that ground alone. The reason I say that just because sunscreen to me is like a medical necessity. Like the reality of what UVA and UVB rays can do to you throughout the day and the fact that brands aren't preaching more of that and preaching proper practices in itself says a lot. But because of that, I don't really recommend expensive sunscreens for that reason. You need sunscreen on the daily. You need to be able to give yourself adequate protection and reapply throughout the day if necessary. And spending 30 bucks on a sunscreen is gonna last you like what, two, three weeks? I'm not gonna cut it. I can give you cheaper options that are much better formulated and better quality than this, for sure. If you're a richer skin tone, if you're not gonna put enough of this on, then yeah. But in reality, like it tones you up. It's gonna be apparent, it's not sheer. You're better off getting a tinted sunscreen or if you're gonna wear makeup over this, for sure. But even still, I would not recommend this for oily skin, really mainly if you have more dry skin. I wouldn't even recommend this maybe for normal skin even. But does it wear well under makeup? Yes. Yeah. So if you're gonna wear makeup, I recommend it in that case alone. But by itself, if you got rich, dark skin, no, no ma'am, avoid. It gets caught in your hairline, it gets caught in your beard, it's heavy, it's greasy. This is not one of my favorite SPF formulas that I've tried, period. Yeah, and that's the tea on that. Like, I'm heated about this. I'm so sorry. I'm so passionate about this right now, but I'm just like, I was so disappointed in this and so many people hype this up and praise this formula, but there's so much wrong that I can't ethically stand behind this, period. If you've tried this, let me know your thoughts and your experience. Maybe I just had my own little situation. Yeah, this missed a lot of marks to me. Um, If you like this kind of video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button so that you can see any other sunscreen related content that I do, heated or not heated. If you have any other sunscreens you want to review as well, leave those down in the comments down below. I have been looking at those comments. I love interacting with my uh, subscribers and followers, but also I'm getting a lot of great recommendations from you guys. So please keep them coming. Keep suggesting things down below. Let's chat it up. If you can, again, be sure to check down those master lists and donate to bail funds, community organizations, share these resources with your friends and your family because they're great resources supporting the people that are out in the streets actively fighting, as well as providing resources to the black and non-black people who are being affected directly by this, whether it's mental health resources, first aid, food, etc. Get the information out there. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye.